Hello, this is Math 2115, uh, coming to you from the College of DuPage, and this is the continuation of the lecture entitled, The Logic of Quantified Statements. Because many important technical statements contain both there exists and for every, a convention has been developed for interpreting them uniformly. When a statement contains more than one kind of quantifier, we imagine the actions suggested by the quantifiers are being performed in the order in which the quantifiers occur, that is, from left to right, except when parentheses say otherwise. For instance, if we have the statement that for every x in set D, there exists a y in set E, such that x and y satisfy the property P of x, y, to show that this is true, you must be able to meet this challenge. Someone else is allowed to choose any element whatsoever from set D, and that person gives you an element and you call it x. The challenge is for you to find an element y so that the persons x and your y taken together satisfy the property p of x, y. Because you do not have to specify the value of y until after the person has given you uh, x, you are allowed to find a different value of y for each x you are given. So note, that means the scope of for every extends throughout the statement, whereas the scope of there exists a y starts in the middle. That is why the value of y depends on the value of x. So here is Tarski's world. We've talked about it before. That is your world. Um, what you're supposed to do is show the following statement is true in this world. For every triangle, there is a square y. For every triangle x, there is a square y, such that x and y have the same color. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. So here is the statement in the picture. Uh, the statement says that no matter which triangle someone gives you, you will be able to find a square of the same color. There are only three triangles, D, um, F, and I, and um, the following table shows that for each of these triangles, um, and here was the D, F, and I, uh, you can find a, um, a square E, H, or G such that it's the same color. So we've exhaustively checked this out in this finite world. Now consider a statement containing both for every and there exists, but where there, er, the there exists comes before the for every. There exists X in a set D such that for every Y in set E, X and Y satisfy uh, the property P of X, Y. To show that this is true, you must find a single element, call it X and D, with the property. After you've found your X, someone is allowed to choose any element whatsoever from E. The person challenges you by giving you that element, call it Y. Your job is to show that your X, together with the person's Y, satisfy the property P of XY. Your X has to work for any Y the person might give you. You're not allowed to change your X once you have specified it initially. Note, that means that the value of x cannot be changed once it's specified because the scope of there exists x extends throughout the entire statement. So here's a problem for you to do. We have the finite world again, and uh, you're supposed to show the following statement is true. There is a triangle x such that for every circle y, x is to the right of y. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. So, uh, so for every uh, triangle uh, x, uh, such that for every circle, excuse me, for every circle uh, y, there is a triangle x. Well, uh, so they're giving you um, a, b, and c. Those are the circles that you're uh, you're being given, and d or uh, I, either one would work for all those. So that, that, that um, you can see in the following table that that's true completely in this finite universe. So here's a summary of the conventions for interpreting statements with two different quantifiers. If you want to establish the truth of a statement of the form for every x in D, there exists a y in E such as p of x, y, your challenge is to allow someone else to pick whatever x they wish, and then you find an element y in E that works for that particular x. If you want to establish the truth of the statement of the form, there exists an x in D such that for every uh, y in E, p of x, y, your job is to find one particular 
x in d that will work no matter what y in e anyone might choose to challenge you with. Here's an example. There's a college cafeteria that has four stations. You can see them here. And um, there are different things that people can pick there, salad or fruit salad at the salad station, and so on and so forth. You've got three students who go through line and make the following choices. You're to say, write each of the following statements informally, that is, write them in words, and find its truth value based on this. So you've got four problems to do. You want to write them informally and find the truth value. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Uh, sometimes a picture can be good, and here we saw, draw a picture showing what the people took from the various stations. And so, uh, and these were what you're supposed to decode. So the solution to part A is there is an item that was chosen by every student. That's the um, statement in informal words. This is true because every student chose pi. B can be translated as there is a student who chose every available item. Now it turns out this is false because no student chose all nine possibilities. C, there is a student who chose at least one item from every station. This is true. Both Uta and Tim chose at least one item from every station. And D, every student chose at least one item from every uh, station. This is false. Yoin did not choose a salad. Here's another um, application. You're here to translate multiple quantifiers from informal to formal language. This time you're to write um, you know, the symbols. The reciprocal of a real number is uh, that number that you multiply by the number to get one. Uh, the following statements are true. Rewrite them informally using quantifiers and variables. So you have two of them to do. Every non-zero real number has a reciprocal. There is no real number with no. There is a real number with no reciprocal. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Uh, so you should say for every uh, u, non-zero, real number u, there exists a real number b such that u times v is equal to 1. And b, there exists a real number c such that for every real number d, c times d does not equal to uh, 1. And um, that uh, is going to be 0 because 0 has no reciprocal. Uh, let's think about the, sever uh, the same kind of consideration uh, here, and we're going to be uh, talking about there is a smallest positive integer. Recall that every integer is a real number, and real numbers are, are of three types, positive, negative, and zero. Zero being neither positive nor negative. Consider the statement. There is a smallest positive integer. Write the statement formally using both the symbols there exists and for every and you could determine the truth value. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. And we'll see how you did in the continuing lecture.